watching Hoochie Daddies. Oh my days. Hoochie Daddies come outside. <laughs> Hoochie Daddies coming outside. Can, can I just ask, um, what does Hoochie Daddy mean? Like, what's a Hoochie Daddy? I did actually say that. Mm. I say we would that. like to know what a Hoochie Daddy um, is. I, I'm going to assume it's a masculine presenting woman. Just a masculine presenting woman. Because I don't feel like I'm of a Hoochie Daddy. Sorts. I don't think I'm a Hoochie Daddy. You think that you do you have feel like you could you have potential to be a huge no, from what I saw on the show? <laughs> no, I I don't align with any of those identities. Uh-huh. I feel like there's different types of masculine presenting lesbians, yeah, and I feel like you've got the mouths and the Jade Foxes of the world. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. they kind of just like you. Mm. Just, <laughs> you know, those those are the kind, kind of, of me. ones, mm-hmm. and you have the sweet heat lesbians, and they were like the huge like. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi, guys, and welcome to episode 170 of the T2s podcast. I am Nana. And I'm Rose. And together we are two twos. Oh, is the last, is this the last episode of the year? I feel like I think it so. could be. I feel like, yeah, it's this the last episode, episode of the year. is coming out. The 27th. <laughs> or the 27th. Mm-hmm. So Merry Christmas. I hope you had a very, very good Christmas. Merry we last episode. Yeah, we didn't say it last episode, but Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, mm-hmm. Happy New Year. All of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. It's been a year. It's been a, it's been an interesting year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, I think it's been a year since what? <laughs> no, no, no. It's been like, you know, 2020, 2023 has been a very, very interesting year yeah. for us. Because I think in the beginning of the year, in the beginning of the year, we was just like, hmm, we're going to see how this podcast goes. We were going to give up. We were <laughs> Guys, we are going to stop the I don't want to call it giving up, though. Okay, I don't want to call it giving up. up. We, we were going to park the podcast. We are going to park it. Permanently. Permanently, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Permanently park it. Because, um, yeah, it's been four years yeah. of, of the podcast since 2019. And we weren't seeing what we wanted to see. Do you know what I mean? So we was going to park it permanently. However, do you know what? It's cr- life is really mad, you know, because we've been feeling like that for quite some time now. And it's only in the recent sort of weeks or even month that we've beginning, we've begun to see... What we've been wanting to see. We yeah. hit 10K the other day. Yeah. We're now on 11K, but we didn't celebrate on social media because we just feel like... All of our counterparts have been yeah. in the double digits of followers, especially on Instagram and stuff like that. For a while. And in this industry, numbers matter. I don't want to keep on going about on about this. Mm. I've gone about this quite a lot. On the yeah. I don't want it to, I don't want to take away from what the podcast is about. Mm-hmm. But like it's about numbers at the end of yeah. the day. And like all of our all, all of our peers in podcasting um that we're we're bunched up with, they they're in the twenty thousand, mm. the fifty thousands and the one million and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And we were in we were in like the, the single digits, yeah, single yeah, thousands, yeah. I would yeah. say, yeah. yeah. And that's still 5,000 people that have taken the time to press follow. That's yeah. a huge amount of people. Mm-hmm. But like in terms of data, it just isn't. Mm-hmm. And we finally hit 10K, but it didn't feel like it was worth celebrating. But it is. I guess it is. And that's what I'm bringing up as well, like as a positive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel like in the beginning of the year, we were somewhere completely different where we wanted to permanently park it. Mm-hmm. And now we're in a space where we're like, okay, like, yeah. right, things are moving yeah. and at a sort of pace that I think we've been wanting. So I, I, it's, a, it's a good thing. I'm, I'm celebrating this. Yeah, I'm celebrating yeah. it. I feel like I know how LMA felt when she went to America and she had her rare blue. <laughs> I just feel like we're in our LMA era. Mm. And because it's the American followers that mm. have got us there. Like, um, if we look in our insights, we have now more listeners in America than we do here. Right. And it's the, the Americans are engaging the way we've been asking everyone to engage. Yes. And that doesn't take away from the, the people who do fucks with us from the UK, mm. you know what I mean? And from other countries as well. Shout out to South Africans. A lot of South Africans hit us up. They did. After Andy came on the podcast mm-hmm. as well. And... You know, America is a big place. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a big huge for so lots like, of states. Once they get involved, it just outnumbers everyone else. Mm. It's such a huge place. Yeah. 
So it doesn't mean that the support everywhere else isn't um, good enough or anything like that. It's just that America, once you break that place, mm -hmm. it's a huge place. It's a huge you place. Know, you like, get the numbers. We obviously value the UK, but obviously, yeah, as you said, the UK is a small place. The percentage of we're black an people. Island. Yeah, we're an island <laughs> yeah. surrounded by water and the percentage of black people in the UK is small. Do you know what I mean? Like, it yeah. is quite and small. That, well, that Reese guy that uh, owns that clothing line, Manny Devere or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah he, he us. That was 4%, isn't it? That's what he came to tell us. That's why he's <laughs> website don't have many black people on it but he's a black owned business it is well um but like we yeah no we 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 love everyone even from the uk that have been supporting us because they have been supporting us for years do you know what i mean but we're glad that you know we've hit 10k i'm happy yeah. i'm happy about that yeah and um you know we always talk about numbers and it's because businesses care about numbers so hopefully they'll be starting to see because yeah. you know yeah everything about numbers child hopefully like the numbers make you make us seem worthy now but um, <laughs> was worthy but, about the numbers child but anyway uh, but yes i'm i'm you know we we wanted to leave the podcast in september we were gonna just announce that we're done in september but it's now december <laughs> so shout was out to us. before the numbers though that was even before the that numbers. was even before the numbers because we love this podcast yeah. if we're gonna be if we're gonna keep it a buck we love this podcast mm -hmm. don't we it's like it's our, it's our baby yeah. That we share together we co-parent this child yeah do you get what i'm saying so it's um we love it yeah, and that's why we're the, here before the numbers came, yeah we, we didn't even like revisit <laughs> no we didn't we the <laughs> <laughs> so obviously i mean also i feel like it's important to say that at the top of the year a lot was going on with us yeah we was going through it we we're really going through it at the top of the year especially mm. me in terms of like my relationships and how people perceived me and mm. stuff like that i think that i was coming off the back of um, it just felt like everybody was against me mm -hmm. and everybody was against me when I was at my lowest. Yeah. And people who were supposed to love me and who were supposed to see me kind of, I just felt like they were judging me heavily when I was at my lowest and yeah. I was given no grace. Yeah. Um, some of them now are their lowest, so I understand where, what I was going through, but it's too late. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's too, too late. It's like, too late. I'm too old to, for, to be, for me to be shouting, to be loved by people who mm. love me automatically. And, um, so I was going through that at the top of the year. Mm -hmm. And now when I think about where I am now mentally competitive, it's a 180. Yeah, completely. It's a 180. I don't give a fuck about anything that's happening in January. I mm -hmm. just don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so, like, you know, I know a year is not like, a lot of time but like just how much you can grow in a year do you know what i mean like it's not even a lot of time but we can see the growth do you yeah. know what i mean like and people i don't know i've learned a lot from what we've gone through what you've gone through mm -hmm. individually what we've gone through together what i've gone through individually i've learned a lot about that and i've learned a lot about giving grace if i'm going to take anything away from like this year is learning to give grace and the people who don't give grace they don't extend the same grace to me bye-bye yeah that's the bye-bye i would say that i've learned that through you mm. i would say that you i've seen you give people grace mm -hmm. and <laughs> I'm just like normally they hate and mean one normally yeah yeah but I've seen them like, give grace to people who just do not deserve their grace yeah and it's and it's because they don't extend it to you mm. or it's capped or it's like conditional mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and that's mm -hmm. that's something I've learned through you as well mm -hmm. like child that grace not everyone's not everyone deserves, deserves it <laughs> yeah not everyone and the thing is we're all trying to have a balance i feel like that is the key to life i feel mm -hmm. like having a balance in everything of course it's very hard to have balance and stuff even like down to the foods that you eat and stuff eating the same thing every day is not good we all know yeah. that do you know what i mean but i just feel like people are not able to do, like people are not able to do it like and i've learned that not everybody deserves it because not everybody's going to give it to you. So you have to take it and go somewhere else mm -hmm. and give it to somebody that, have, that actually deserves it. Go where love is. That go is that is the mantra. Is. That's the mantra. And it's always been That's the mantra, old, you know. Girl. And it's so mad how we couldn't, when we was going through our shit, we wasn't leaning on that mantra. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, was, we were saying it all the time. But we we wasn't say like, it all the time. You know, we weren't leaning on that. And do you know what people, I think I've noticed that people are selfish mm. as well. That's something that I've really learned. Yeah. People are selfish. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to not take that selfishness personally because I've re removed the grace. Right. When you when you keep the grace, that's why you have to remove the grace. Yeah. You don't deserve it because when you keep it there, then you are kind of encouraging their selfishness. Mm -hmm. It's just like, then you build resentment. And exactly. It's, it's so long. But when you take that out of it, 
Like you're not hard done. You don't feel hard done by. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? When you take that out of it and you realize that okay, this this person is this person is selfish. Like I'm not going to. I'm going to give as much as they give. I'm not going to overextend myself. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's when you don't feel you don't feel like you resent them or you don't feel hard done by. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing is I try not to have high expectations for people. And I know some people see it like weird. You know, I know some people like well, these are people around you and you should have expectations. They should be there for you and they should do this and they should do this and i completely understand that but for me and for me not to be disappointed my expectations are quite low for people you have to manage your expectations manage them well low. you have to manage your expectations you have to manage them well but yeah, yeah. i would you definitely it's, it's been a year of growth yeah it's been a year of i mean we're still not millionaires Ugh, but we will be soon amen i can feel it Amen. Amen. <laughs> like, yeah. But we would like to be the next, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, each, not all yeah. to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And I, w- I want to, one thing I would say is this year, through my growth, I have isolated a lot of my loved ones mm. who have been there for me. Uh, but the isolation is not permanent, mm. it's temporary. It's just that I need You can to level things out. To yeah. Le- yeah, I needed to like play Balance. catch up. I need mm-hmm. to have some balance somewhere and I'm still figuring out the balance but I always knew I feel like I was always step I was always afraid to step into this version of myself mm-hmm. because I knew they would isolate people mm-hmm. and the people pleased outside of me didn't want to isolate people but I don't want people please us so I had to drop that mm-hmm. and I, it, I did isolate people it didn't mean that I have much less love for them mm-hmm. one or two I do have less love for though I'm not gonna lie but like for the most part yeah it doesn't mean I have less love for them it's just that I need to put myself first like the beginning the episode that we started this year with, I said I'm gonna put myself uh, yes. first and I did that this year. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can sit here now, the last episode, mm-hmm. and say I successfully did, did that. that. Yes. And for that, if, if I left this year only doing that, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's something I said I was going to do. And, yeah, and you did it. So, and it's not often that we start a new year off by saying we're going to do something. And, and we follow through. And we follow through. Yeah. But I follow through. So yes, yeah. I'm happy Give about it up that. to Pharrell. Give mm-hmm. it up for Pharrell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We love that. No, that's amazing because yeah. we did say that. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like, yes, you had to like, sometimes, you know, you have to like, when you have like artwork on a canvas and you have to kind of like start again. Yeah. It's like having to start again mm-hmm. and, you know, make new art. And I feel like that's what you've like, that's what you've done. Mm-hmm. And you're going to do it with a lot more like wisdom and foresight yeah. and all of that stuff. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like, yeah, it's a good, Foresight, you know, child. Foresight. Child. I think, I think uh, that's something that we need to continue to learn. <laughs> I feel like we've had good foresight this time. I don't feel like we've like put ourselves in situations yeah, you're right, that we though. don't need to be you're in. You're right, you're right. Because we didn't have foresight before, before. <laughs> and look how we ended up. And yeah, 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 yeah. So we and we ended up in a painful place mm. for both of us. Mm. So now we have foresight. We do have we've foresight. Exercised this year. Do you know what? You're so right because I've even been thinking about myself and sort of like my putting myself in stupid, silly situations. Mm-hmm. Like, but now I'm able to think ahead. Okay, if I do this, this is what's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? These yep. are going to be the consequences of my actions. So I'm not going to do that yep. because I don't want headache. I don't want it. I don't want it. So I have learned. I have yeah. learned something this year. Somebody asked me to do something the other day, yeah. Mm. That put me in shit before. Mm. And nobody would know. If I did this thing, no one right, would know. Right, I know what you talk about. It. But mm-hmm. foresight. <laughs> this time I used foresight yep. and I said no. Yep. And they were just like, but why? I was like, I don't like chaos. Mm. I was like, do you like chaos? And they just put dot dot dot. They like I don't like chaos in my big big age. Look at us. This is the thing. Like I just feel like we're too old for that. Mm-hmm. Like we always say this. I know. Yeah, you might. You lot must like hate us going on about our age so much. But we are too old for certain we're things. Too old. Right. Yeah. I was thinking the other day when when the clock strikes to 2024, mm-hmm. I can officially say I'm going to be 20, 35. <laughs> 35. I'm almost forty. I'm almost forty. <sighs> when is January the first? I can officially say I'm going to be 35 in next year. Yeah. That means I'm almost 40. No, honestly, <laughs> we're, we're, honestly, that's what I think about too, because obviously like the years go by so quickly. Mm-hmm. Listen, I was 25 the other day, you know, I was only 25 the other day. But it's so- I remember it like it was yesterday. <gasps> and well, yeah, we're almost 40. Almost 40. We're actually almost 40. Well, almost 40, girl. That's crazy. 40 and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> It's so crazy because I like, speak about the age thing. Yeah. My mum, I was thinking about this. My mum's prime was like in her thirties. Mm. And like, you know, like 
you know, people think like their primes in their twenties and stuff like. Mm. But my mum looked her buffest in her thirties and forties. I think I've looked my buffest so far in my thirties, and I just I think I'm still glowing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Up well, I don't yet. think we finished. No, I don't think we finished. No. Which is a sexy guy. It's sexy. That's people. yeah. That's what, as these bloody young girls, anyway. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tired. <laughs> I don't even want to get to. Anyway, um, yeah. This, I think last week was it two weeks ago? It might have been two, three weeks ago. We spoke about a case um, about a transgender girl who was murdered by two young um, people and the verdict came in yesterday. Today? Just before was it today? To yeah, maybe like an hour or two before we came to the studio. <sighs> the verdict came in and they both, the kids who murdered this transgender girl got both got guilty mm -hmm. verdicts, right? Um, I don't know how long their sentence is. I don't know if they're... They've they, been, haven't been they haven't been sentenced yet. yet. They okay. Got, they, just guilty they just got a guilty uh, verdict and... It's quite, it's sad. It's sad all round. Do you it's know what I mean? Three lives lost. Mm -hmm. Like, three lives, three young lives mm. didn't need to be lost that day. Like, it's just very unnecessary. I think, um, it's just, it's sad all around. It is really it's sad, sad all around. Involved. It's sad for their families. Mm -hmm. um, it's sad for a lot of trans, young trans people yep. looking on to this. Because mm -hmm. I can imagine there's a lot of young trans people around that age, like, following the case very yeah, closely because yeah. you know it could be them it could be them and yeah. I, I hate to say that but it could be them mm -hmm. and i hope it isn't i really definitely hope it isn't but just hope that this never happened this doesn't happen yeah. again do you know what i mean because as you said like three lives lost like obviously brianna jai isn't coming back like you know the people that love her are going to miss her so much mm -hmm. it's like christmas it's the new year and unfortunately she's not going to be able to see that yeah. um and i just feel like i feel a lot i really feel like really bad for um her parents yeah. and the people that love her um and then obviously those young kids their their life is just yeah even their parents as well they like they just they probably just can't believe like They're how this happened mm -hmm. as as parents they probably can't believe that like their kids were sitting in their room planning mm -hmm. something like this while well, they're probably I don't know downstairs making dinner. food yeah do you know what I mean yeah like, that how this happened mm -hmm. and obviously I think because of their ages we don't know their names mm -hmm. we don't know that specific details personal details about them but I could just imagine and we don't know their family mm. but I can just imagine that it's dis disappointing all, all yeah disappointing from everyone yeah and I don't even and because they're kids as well even like Brianna's family I don't know how much anger they can feel towards other but, children i mean i read that the mum like she doesn't really feel sorry for them anymore because mm. obviously they blamed each other they have no remorse they have no remorse yeah. they're old enough to show remorse yeah they yeah. are they are mm. they're teenagers yeah um you know and the fact that this was so just so calculated they sat down and you know really planned out how to you know murder someone that's just like it's just yeah disgusting. I don't, if you haven't seen the case details, I've seen, I saw a lot of it on, for a thread on Twitter mm -hmm. and through the BBC News. But if I would encourage to go and look, but look with caution because it is, Trigger warning, it it? is very heavy. Yeah. And like we said in the other episode, like, I just can't believe that kids were, were talking about yeah. this. Like, yeah. Like, that, that these things even came to mind mm -hmm. and then they actually went to go and do it. Like we would never know the full truth. We will never know. Who did what? Because yeah. they both blamed each other. Mm -hmm. But we both, but either way, they were both to blame. They were both, they were both yeah. there. They both planned it. And, at the end of the day, somebody died. Yeah. Um, that's someone that didn't need to die. And like even reading the text messages where Brianna was like messaging the mum to say they were on the bus by themselves and things like that. And, and she thought that girl was her friend. She thought that was her friend. It's just really sad. Yeah. Know? And they and you know, obviously they like even the language that they used, they called her like the boy called her it yeah. as well. And you know, them not building a case on the fact that she was transgender and the fact that it could have been a hate crime. I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's a disservice. But I also feel like they might have done it. Because, you know, you know, when it comes to the law and stuff, they build cases on what they think that they can win with as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, if it was a hate crime, there probably might yeah, be enough evidence. Maybe that. not. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so... That's true. I, I understand. I CPS. I had, did an apprenticeship at the CPS mm. in like 2013 or something like that. And there were some cases where... I used to be a case progression officer. That's what my role was. So we used to like... Uh, make sure that all the evidence and everything like that was patterned mm -hmm. before it went to court mm -hmm. and all the statements were written up all of that and there were some cases that was obviously the person did it right whatever the case may be but they'd have to drop it because like how could you prove it yeah reasonable doubt you have to have yeah. like reasonable doubt or and 
one of them, for example, we, there was a case where this little boy, he um, he was beaten up by his mum's boyfriend. Mm. But the mum took away her statement. And that was it. And that was it. And that was it. Like, just because she took away everything else. Was but there's no, to go. there was no evidence. There were, pic- there were pictures of the boys' scars mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And the hospital statements from the nurses and stuff like that. But you can't prove but who did it. the mum was the, um, was the eyewitness. Mm. And... I think that the scars and thing could have been like he he hurt himself at nursing. Yeah, right, right, like, right. It could have right. been it could have yeah. been disputed. Yeah. So they dropped it because mm. the mum's because the mum decided to drop her statement because she got back with him, and it was just like it was just I remember that was one of the first things I saw and I never forget that because it was in Tottenham as well. Right. And it was local and I thought rah and it was a young black uh, girl as well. So I just like rah like. But some listen. Some things will get dropped because of one little detail. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. So I get, I get that. I get, you know, why they didn't go with that. Um, build a case on a hate crime. But mm-hmm. you know, it's just really sad. I want us to do better. I want society to do better. I want society to be a bit more compassionate and um, more open and more accepting. Mm. Um, so this stuff doesn't happen. We need to like proper teach children that. You know, everyone matters, no matter the skin colour, no matter the gender, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from. Everyone deserves um, to be treated fairly and with love. Yeah, I know? agree. And it's even, like, it's hard. We just have a world that we need, yeah, but mm-hmm. a government that is working against that. Yeah, yeah. Like, with the recent... Um, law like legislation they're putting in place that teachers have to tell parents yeah if their student is identifying as um as trans so if they want to change their pronouns and if they want to change their school uniform like to wear the you know the opposite sex whatever gender they are i just this government yeah this so it's just i think misguided i just feel like Spineless. somebody wanted to change their pronoun is not that it's deep. It's not that deep. Like, <laughs> like or even their uniform, it's not that deep. And the fact is, like, the fact that we still have gendered uniforms in 2023 is dumb. And when I started um, Our Ladies Secondary School, so I went to Our Ladies Secondary School. Mm-hmm. I remember when I started that school, I started at end of year seven because my old school got shut down. Yeah. Yeah. And my old school, to be honest, now that I think about it, the uniform wasn't gendered. It mm. was just jumpers. Mm-hmm. That was the uniform. And then you wore whatever you wore. You had to wear a white shirt and right. black bottoms, but it's up to you which mm-hmm. ones. And my head, the deputy head was a lesbian. She was a masculine, a masculine presenting lesbian. Now, but yeah, Miss Alabash. Mm. And that was very free. Then I went to Our Ladies and I had to wear a skirt. Catholic school. And a blazer. Mm. And I remember, I remember sitting in the office and asking the head teacher do I have to wear a skirt? Mm-hmm. She'd be like, you'd be the older person wearing trousers. I was, I was okay. I didn't see the problem with it. She's like, no, we don't have um, it's not trousers. It's not, it's not an option in our mm. uniform. Now, when I see girls from my ladies, they have trousers. Mm. And I love that for them because there's someone in there like me that wasn't comfortable right, wearing, wearing a skirt. skirt. Yeah. So I love that. And it's just like, it's just so like, dated mm-hmm. to make people wear certain things in school. Like, it's just... Ugh. Yeah, it's very, very dated. I can't believe that they're still making like students do that no. like, that's ridiculous but like this you know l- new legis- legislation i think look i i understand where they're coming from because obviously these are parents they're the guardians of these kids i completely understand it but there may there might be like situations where these kids are not safe and how will they know that because they're saying basically what they're saying is like the teachers will tell parents if they think it's safe enough to do so. But how do you know? How I'm do you know sure. someone is not not a bigot? Like people yeah. pretend, all the, and we're walking around with racists. We're walking amongst racists. We see them we on Twitter. Them. We work with them. Like, like we see them every day. We just don't know it because they're in their homes tweeting rubbish, tweeting yeah. racist shit, tweeting um, transgender shit, t- t- um, tweeting homophobic shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're walking around them. They're amongst us. Yeah, they're, they're even your friends. Like, you've been on Instagram and you see so you and one of your friends repost re- something. Oh, my like, God. Which happened the other day. And it's just like, hello. These people are everywhere. And it's and that that legislation reminds me. Remember my cousin who was a teacher? Yep. And she did it, refused. And she, yep. got, she got suspended because she refused to... Um, call one of the trans kids by their current pronouns because the parents didn't know mm. and she got in trouble for that like they need to keep that same energy yeah like, this yeah new thing is not what and i did see on twitter as well when um somebody quote tweeted a news article about it saying that how when they were 15 yep saw that um the teacher 
told uh, a Muslim teacher mm-hmm. told their family that they were gay mm-hmm. and they haven't spoken to their since, since their family yeah. since, haven't seen their family mm-hmm. since that day and now they're an adult and they were 15 like that can make children so much more vulnerable than mm-hmm. what they are they're already vulnerable because of their age what if they don't add feel, extra what if they don't feel safe I honestly feel like it's up to the kid to feel comfortable enough to tell a parent mm-hmm. do you know what I mean I know like I can get as like obviously I'm not a parent you're a parent so let me know if I'm wrong but I understand parents need to need to know like what's going on in their kids lives mm-hmm. but sometimes this can be like that can be a detriment to the child because the parent could be a bigot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the parent, as somebody who's queer and who is also a parent, like what do you think about that? Um, I feel like you have to let the child go to the, go to their parent mm. themselves, and that's not just because people need to come out or whatever the, or whatever it is. That's just because that's how life is. When they're older, they yeah. need to learn to um, exert themselves. Mm-hmm. They need to learn to create boundaries for mm-hmm. themselves. They need to learn, they need to know when they're comfortable to do certain mm-hmm. things as well. Like, even though the kids are also entitled to privacy, mm-hmm. and that's something that we have to remember because as they, we can't let them grow up and now trying to figure out their privacy later on the line because mm-hmm. that, that leaves them vulnerable. Yeah. That leaves them not being able to say no to mm-hmm. things. That leaves them not being able to put up their boundaries and... They just continue being vulnerable. You can't, they, they struggle to mature if they're not able to do it from when they're mm. young. So I definitely feel like, like even me, I've got Amis. I put Amis um, location. location on my phone yeah. just the other day. And I did that because we put things in place mm-hmm. for her to keep me posted. Yeah, to keep her safe. Uh, to keep her safe. Mm-hmm. It's been about a year that she's been having a chance before mm-hmm. I put on this location um, for her to keep me posted. And, that. and she didn't do it to the standard she's meant to be doing it. So now her location is on my phone. Yeah. And... Like I don't be checking her location all the time because mm-hmm. again she is still in test mm-hmm. privacy. But when you need to exactly, and she needs to learn mm-hmm. to tell me, oh, mummy, this is where I am. Mm-hmm. Um, she needs to learn to be honest. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She, um, she, I mean, she's honest, mm-hmm. but like she can't be taking tw- tw- thirty minutes to message me back because <laughs> she doesn't want me to know where she is in that thirty minutes. Yeah, so now I have a location just in case. But like. You have to teach them, even with uniforms. Mm-hmm. I get it because when you go to the when you go to the workplace, you have to work, um, dress a certain way. You have to be presentable. All but, this stuff, but yeah. you have to be comfortable. But you also have to be comfortable. because how is this child going to be able to learn to sit down and to learn when they feel so uncomfortable and what yeah. they're wearing? There just needs to be a balance. There needs, there needs to, to be a balance. Key to life. Yeah. Like I just don't feel like I don't think it's teachers' business mm-hmm. talking about pronouns. Mm-hmm. If someone told you that that's what their pronoun is, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's your business to go and tell. I don't to get about sexuality. It's not that deep. Not that the deep. child is not in any. Um, harm it has nothing to do with the periodic table they're not on un- <laughs> or algebra they're not unsafe they're not in any harm's way why why does the parent need to know if they don't feel comfortable if they don't feel safe enough for the parent to know i just that's listen that's the, the hill that I'm, I'm willing to die on yeah. and i'm not going to change my mind because i feel like pronouns and uniforms is not that deep it's not that deep it's proper yeah. not there that are deep. people dying on the street because they're cold and hungry mm. that is that deep that is important do you know what i mean um speaking of you know people walking amongst us who are homophobic the other day somebody that i know um, posted because I know the, the Pope is said that it's okay for queer people to get married in the church to get blessed, yeah, to get oh to get blessed in mm-hmm. the their union to get blessed in the church, yeah. right? So this person that I know um, posted that you know article and then wrote oh the devil oh, what did she, what did she the say devil's working overtime. The, the devil's working overtime. This is somebody that I've lips we've lips we've swapped spit. We, that means do you think that you lips the devil because your lips now because she had another woman do you think that that's that's a sin do you do you think that the devil was working overtime when you were lips to me cool and she's the one who came to you to lips you can you <laughs> hell no hell no she's like yeah yeah touch my bum like <laughs> You like this is what pisses me off about some straight identifying women because you'll be there you know, wanting to to have fun with a girl or whatever, but then you're you're homophobic. And when I confronted her about that, she was like, "Oh, I'm just because I said this, just because I don't believe that queer people should get married in a church doesn't mean that I'm homoph- homophobic." But when you say the devil was working overtime, child, that sounds homophobic to me. to me. Yeah, that sounds. And I was just like, okay, because I'm not gonna do go back and forth back with and you. Forth, I'm yeah. not gonna do that. No. But just know I've taken that into account, that a mental note. I've made a mental note of that. Yeah. I will never lips that girl so again. You can't fuck with straight people. Mm-mm. Straight women? You oh, can't fuck with straight hell women. No. You can't. Like, you, listen. Mm-mm. Keep your lips over there. You lips on a nyash. 
keep it over there. It's fine. It's fine. There's more. There's more um, lips and yash in this world. There is. Yeah. Ciao. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. And I've been watching Hoochie Daddies. Oh my days. Hoochie Daddies come outside. <laughs> Hoochie Daddies coming outside. I don't even know the, wait, how even that theme song. Is the theme song is terrible. A madness. Wooty. I think the theme song is is performed by Hootie Wooty Woody. She's the host. Oh, okay, the right. Creator. Yeah. Of Hoochie Daddies. And if I got, those of you who don't know what Hoochie Daddies is, it's a reality show where eight masculine presenting women are living under one roof and they're competing for a chance to win a Hoochie Daddy chain. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> going on a Hoochie Daddy chain. Sorry, I'm not judging. Go on. Hoochie Daddy chain. Mm-hmm. A trip for two to Jamaica. That's nice. And bragging rights. What's a bragging rights? So you just get oh, to be in the top Hoochie Daddy of the house. Oh, actually, they also added another prize on at the What's end. What's that? To be put in, in a, a movie. Some movie that I guess that the creator's doing. Yeah. C- can I just ask, um, what does Hoochie Daddy mean? Like, what's a Hoochie Daddy? I didn't actually say that. Mm. Actually say we would like to know what a Hoochie Daddy um, is. I, I'm going to assume it's a masculine presenting woman. Just a masculine presenting woman. Because I don't feel like I'm of a Hoochie Daddy. Sorts. I don't think I'm a Hoochie Daddy. You think that you do you have feel like you could you have potential to be a huge no, from what I saw on the show? <laughs> no, I I don't align with any of those identities. Uh-huh. I feel like there's different types of masculine presenting lesbians, yeah, and I feel like you've got the mouths and the Jade Foxes of the world. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. they kind of just like you. Mm. Just, <laughs> you know, those those are the kind, kind of, of ones. Mm-hmm. And you have the sweet heat lesbians, and they were like the huge daddy. Mm. And then. I just feel like those are the two. Let's let's just say those are the two main ones. Right, to me. right. Yeah, masculine presents and lesbian. How they present and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And like, I couldn't imagine Jade Fox in that house. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. imagine Mal in there. I couldn't imagine Mal in there. I couldn't imagine them e- even being friends. No, yeah. no. Even the Christian one, I couldn't imagine them being. Friends. What was she? Yeah. The, I would. I did appreciate. The Christian I like her. ones uh, uh, representation though mm-hmm. because she. It was different to see mm-hmm. some, someone like that mm-hmm. in um, this kind of show. But that's what it was. So they had to compete. Every single episode, there was uh, a challenge and the winner got a point. Whoever was at the end, the last episode of the most points, won the show, yeah. Mm-hmm. But in true um, Ratchet TV style, mm-hmm. there were fights. Of course there were. Multiple fights. Mm-hmm. Um, four of them, I think four of them were like exotic dancers, strippers. So like two of them had beef in the stripping world right, prior to coming in the right. house. Um, some of them, as you know, the scene over here is small. And even though they're from different states, they knew of each other mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like some of them knew the host. So some of them thought that people had favoritism because they knew the host through basketball and just di- just different things. Right. Like, you know, and different things. Mm-hmm. And it was so, the show itself, the production was abysmal do you know what i watched i watched half of the first episode mm-hmm. and you know i you know when they're introducing everyone so and they introduced the house and the house is in the sticks is in like i don't know if it's like in the south i think it was of, in florida okay yeah. in florida uh, the, the florida is mostly the sticks yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah, yeah. um and jacksonville i saw you know the house you know very sort of farm like vibes that was Airbnb child Airbnb <laughs> and now, do you know what I was like oh, it's fine we have to start from yeah, somewhere yeah. do you know what I mean um, and, but the thing is like they everyone had different sized room different beds did they do that on purpose so that they can create tension and conflict the thing I don't know because there was no discussion of why it was like that what? Okay. Like somebody was in the closet why was she in the closet somebody, a big woman was sleeping in the closet and the thing is like, and they assigned beds to everyone yeah it's so not like everyone could choose it was an ensuite bedroom and somebody had a king room and in their closet it was somebody else's room. That's rude. So and the closet wasn't even some big closet. You know when you watch American TV shows, sometimes they have a huge closet. Yeah. It was like an airing cupboard. No, it wasn't yeah. a huge closet. And somebody had an air mattress. Maya B had an air mm. mattress. And I, But they never actually discussed why they did the rooms like that. Yeah, maybe it was just what they could like afford or like like maybe. production could afford. But yeah, that, when I saw that, I was like, okay and yeah i mean like the in terms of the production the scenes the audio the audio was the, the audio was terrible some of the scenes were just lingering too much like after yeah. they got assigned their beds they were just t- having like random conversation and like, why didn't you cut this yeah they did it every episode that like, they have they, the conversation lingers too much you can just cut it down you can cut it down the bits start engaging because i did switch off a lot mm. a lot of people i've spoken to haven't continued watching the it. editing is abysmal <laughs> But I was determined he was going to win. Mm-hmm. So I watched it till the end. Who won? Um, spoiler alert. Sorry, I'm about to say he won. I'm going to skip this. We're going to watch it. <laughs> it was um, uh, King Dyke. 
No, not King Bag. Was it King Stud? King Stud. King Stud. I don't even know what I can't The dark skin one with long locks. Hmm. We had a fight. The one had a fight in the first episodes. I didn't even get that far. <laughs> What's the name? King Locks? No, King... King Stud. King yeah, Stud. King King and the thing is, why do they all have like Stud in their name? There was Dyke God. There was King. There was King Stud. There was Maya B. Um, there was Taz. There was Fantasy. Fantasy. I did like Fantasy because Fantasy reminded me of me. Fantasy. Sassy. Yeah. Mm. Fantasy was a bit sassy. Mm-hmm. Um, masculine presenting. They got five kids. <laughs> what? F- I was shocked. What? Like from them or like from their partners? Did it or say? Both. They said they've got five kids. Mm, that's a lot. Um, Taz had one. Is is the one? Is that the one that we have always had um, alcohol? No, no. Fantasy's the the the. She's got locks. Oh, okay. and she was a dancer. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the episode where she was dancing? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. She was a good dancer though. She's mm. um, she was a dancer, exotic dancer, and she she was she. They spoke about in one of the episodes. They basically had to had a challenge where they had to like hump each other to smash balloons, mm-hmm. uh, smash balloons. Mm-hmm. And they were all like, oh, they felt violated because, you know, they don't do stuff for stars and da, 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 all this stuff. Right, deep. Some of them were really upset about it. But this fantasy was like, girl, <laughs> I'm a woman and I like women. <laughs> and she was like, she basically said that she's stuff for stud. Okay, I like she's that. Like, oh, she does, she does, she dates everyone. She yeah. dates all types of women. Mm. That she's not opposed to it. But some of them were, they some of them were doing that, too they much. They thought that was gay, innit? it? They were doing too, some of them, it was like, it was too much energy towards something. Like, it was just too much. It was like, Girl. It's just maybe you like that. Maybe you do like studs. Mm. Maybe you do like studs for studs because it's just a, it's just a competition. Yeah, it's not one of them in particular. The, I think the one you're talking about always had a drink in her hand. Yeah, the short with the short hair. Yeah. So they had a challenge, a switch challenge, where they had to put on makeup. Oh. And before the challenge, she was acting like she didn't want to do it. She was acting so much against the stud for stud thing. She was doing all of that. She killed it. And she liked it. She was doing all of that <laughs> she was so good at it and every now and then when they, when they all started drinking yeah. well, there was a challenge where they had to drink you could see that the the toughness was decreasing and then the and then femininity the was yeah. out, do you know what I mean and I did see that in her mm-hmm. and one of them um, actually said that she was she, well, I don't know what I don't know what pronouns they use actually, but I think there might be he him pronouns mm-hmm. towards the end of the show. That's mm-hmm. what they said. They said that, and the first episode they didn't like being called a dyke. They were re- they had a, that's why they had a fight because oh really that one of them called them a dyke. Yeah, but a dyke is isn't an offensive like an offensive term. It's, it's just, just she finds it te- offensive. It's just like the n word. Some people find some black people find it offensive. Yeah, some people use it. Um, so I guess it's just like dyke. It's like well, New York babes was just basically like how she they well she uses dyke because she's that 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 it describes to her a hyper masculine lesbian. right and that's all it really means okay hyper, yeah so she wouldn't call herself that because she's a femme mm. so if but she's like hyper over there in new york anyway correct us if we're wrong but mm. in new york she said that's what she would say is a dyke yeah but it, but it was a derogatory term once mm-hmm. upon a time yeah you know what i mean and i think people still use it as a degro- uh, derogatory term yeah even we got called well Kind of years ago, we yeah, were, yeah. Somebody called us that, but I, don't, I think they thought they were being friendly, but we didn't find it friendly. <laughs> and but yeah, like the show is a mess. Um, it seems like Wooty is or Woody is um is making up the rules as she's going along with the challenges. Yeah, probably. So that's why it seems like things weren't fair. Mm. And some of the challenges, I think certain other people, some people should have won, and like some and they didn't. Think yeah. Somebody else won, but there was a season two. I saw that they got yeah, yeah season they, two. They're casting for season mm. two, and I do. It, it will get better. Continue. It will get it better. Will only get better. Yeah. Like obviously, she obviously had a minimal budget. Mm. Um, it was very ghetto. Yeah. But I'm sure like a bad girls club started from somewhere. This is what I'm saying. Like, everywhere, smaller everyone, houses. Yeah. Everyone starts from somewhere. Mm. So like, shout out to them. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was intre- I was very shocked to find out they were the same lesbians that, that when it was um free Britney Griner from prison. Yeah. Like when they were doing that. Oh damn! It's them. I'm <laughs> friggin' done. I'm so done. It was them. I um, was like, she is these lesbians. I'm so done. Do you know what? I love the representation. I'm here for it. No matter how, like, even if the production is terrible, mm-hmm. like, I'm here for the representation. I'm yeah. here to see like masculine people. Yeah, black in the as media. Well. Black masculine All of them are black. people in the media. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because it's lo- it's great having like shows like the one like Mao was in, um, but she was the only black person in the. Mm-hmm. Black like mask yeah. in the show yeah. do you know what I mean so mm-hmm. it's nice to have a wide variety of like mask pers- black mask personalities yeah. you know yeah and that, that's why I really appreciate the, the gospel singers mm. Maya B's um, representation because like they're a Christian mm-hmm. but they're still mask presenting they got their first tattoo on the show because mm. one of the challenges to get a tattoo it was two points you got a tattoo on your head 
at one point and <laughs> Maya B wanted to get them points Maya B got the tattoo in her head I love that I love that and but I could also see that she was uncomfortable mm. she was uncomfortable drinking but she did it anyway because she wanted to win mm. and and I looked at her Instagram afterwards she's she's a really good singer I need to check her out because I, I did when I watched it obviously I saw like up until they all got introduced and got assigned their rooms she was like my favourite one yeah from the same. beginning yeah, yeah she was like my favourite one and it's nice to see that it's nice to see actually like a Christian mask presenting because mm. you know we know what it's like with religion and all of that when you're queer and you know you you kind of get like out ousted and mm -hmm. you know there's no kind of space for you in in a church or a place of like religion um a religious place but I, it's nice to see that representation it's nice yeah. to see that they still have their faith yeah. you know it's really really nice to see that so yeah that shout out to that show yeah, shout out to we them. love shout that them, like you know season season, season two is coming <laughs> Season two is coming on to Sassy Studs. Okay. So there has been that video clip with the girl. Have you seen her? <sighs> yes. Short hair. There's this there's this girl, short. She's a TikTok right? woman. She has TikTok. Who keeps going around, going viral with her sassy stud um, content, yeah. Where she talks about how like she's short and like if the film is older than her, the film is to protect her. And like just lots of different things about mm -hmm. being a sassy stud. And it's quite some people have opposing things to say and some people are for it. Isn't it just meant to be a laugh? Like, isn't it just meant to be a bit of content that's funny? Like, I see her content and I'm like, yeah, like, it's funny. And I'm I'm sure she is not exactly like that. You know when she's like, I'm not going to take out the bin and all of that? Yeah. The girl was taking out the bin. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm not, I'm not, how, I'm I'm not convinced. sure how convinced she, if she's really that sassy. I don't think she's that sassy. Like, I should... I, every minute i'm no, not sure <laughs> i don't think she is i think she is just you know being a, a bit of a comedian yeah. she's making content it's funny it's entertaining yeah. but people are taking it too seriously and you know that's why i feel like the word stud is too like fixed like yeah you I know think, well for me if she's doing content and i can appreciate that she's doing content but there are people out there like her and i feel like the word stud, I've always understood the word stud to be someone who's hyper masculine. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's what I don't use the term for myself because I'm not hyper masculine. Mm -hmm. And it, using the word stud is not going to validate me in any sort of way. Do you know, it's not by force use the word. I'm not going to try that. and mold that word into me. No, to fit it's me. just not by force. No. You know what I mean? Words mean things. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, my understanding of stud has always been mm -hmm. a woman who is hyper masculine mm -hmm. or a non-binary person who is hyper masculine. And I don't know if that's because I got my meanings for that from when I watched it. That documentary. documentary. Yeah. Years ago. Mm -hmm. Like there's not a part two to the documentary. And I don't know if it's like, a, it's, if it's a coincidence that the majority of them are now a trans men, mm -hmm. I don't know. But like, that's where I got my definition from in the first place. So that's always been that. That's for me. Mm -hmm. So now when I see people like putting on makeup or wigs and then they say that you're just they're like, they're stud. not a stud. I'm like, that's not a stud. Yeah. Do you know and that's mean? valid as well. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely valid. I, I can't identify as a stud because I am not hyper masculine. I've never been hyper masculine. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is really masculine about me is the clothes that I wear. Yeah. I wear men's clothes. I wear boxers. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing yeah. I can't identify or call myself a stud because that's just not who I am. And I think that we've spoken about this before. I think that it's fair to leave the word stud for studs. For studs. Is actually fair yeah, to do that. Yeah, like stop by force. Yeah, add not, a little sprinkle. Yeah, or on top. you don't need to. You know, because I know some people even add like soft, mm -hmm. soft studs. You know, and I just think that masculine presenting is a better term to use because yeah. it's a spectrum and it's not fixed. Yeah, and that's easy. So I understand where people are coming from because there's. I've seen a lot of tweets. A lot of studs have been like quote tweeting her and saying, "Well, then, like you're not a stud, then." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even fems. Yeah, I've seen some yeah, a lot of fems as like, well. Yeah, this ain't it, girl. Mm. Kind of like you are a fe you are a fem, and people yeah. are like, "Oh, if you want to be a fem, just be a fem." <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, or yeah. you know, and I get where they're coming from. I get because when I when I watch her videos, yeah. I see more of the femininity than mm -hmm. I do the masculinity. Yeah. Even though like she's got a fade and she wears all this stuff, I think the way that she presents personality wise and mm. her energy, I see that before As a I femme. see her clothes yeah. and her shape up. Mm -hmm. Like I see such a pretty face mm. when I look at her videos. I, I actually see a because you can see like it, like if you look at Candice um, Brathwaite for example, mm -hmm. the other podcaster. 
She has a fade. But she's fem as well. I don't see anything no. masculine about no. her. Like, do you know what I'm saying? They have a similar haircut. Mm. And so it's not necessarily about the haircut or about the clothes. It's also about the energy. It's about your energy. Give off as well. No, yeah. And I see a lot of feminine energy. I feel like all the sassy mm-hmm. studs I've seen or whatever the case may be, she's probably the most feminine one that I've seen online in a long time. It is a lot about the energy. I, I, but it, also, I think it might be jokes at the same I think time. Might, do you know what? I'm I'm convinced that she's not that sassy. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think, think so. she's doing it for content and get your coin in it. Like yeah. TikTok, I'm sure she's doing very, very well on TikTok. Get your coin. Mm-hmm. And it's like entertaining the way she's doing it. It's entertaining. So I'm not convinced that she is that sassy. I think she is, I don't think she is that masculine though. Mm-hmm. I think, um, she. I don't think she's a stud. No. Like I wouldn't say that she's a stud, but she is masculine presenting. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I, but I do feel like people are doing the most on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie. Like the quote teaser, let it let it, it do what it's doing. Relax. It's something, something, something. Relax because do you know what it is as well is that you know I feel like these studs are. Like they, I don't know if they've like feel some certain type of way about her calling herself a stud too, and what that, how that impacts them as a stud. Like, do yeah. your thing, sweetie. Like, do be your hyper masculine self. Yeah. No one can take that away from you. I do feel like when it comes to hyper masculine women or at all studs, I do feel like there is less representation for them mm. these days. I feel like that might be because if you're more feminine, you're more palatable and you're more easier to digest. I feel like it's always been like a that. more mainstream. Well, yeah, I feel it's always been like that for a more mainstream mm. audience. And if you are hyper masculine, then there is a barrier there for you. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like the people that are from that from that kind of masculinity are frustrated. So but, like even in our comments mm. the other day, someone commented on our TikTok and someone said, we were talking about not you said that you'd have to be rah rah rah, mm. basically, yeah. And someone commented saying something, why do soft studs are always putting down hyper masculine women or something like that? And I responded and I said, We're talking about toxicity, not mm. masculinity. Mm-hmm. Because the two are not the same. Mm-hmm. The, you never think toxic toxicity and masculinity mm-hmm. are the same, but they're not. Mm-hmm. And they're two different things. But I do I do understand because even me, before we had this platform, I felt frustrated about what was out there as a black British masculine presenting um representation Mm -hmm. you know all of them were mixed race at the time yeah and i feel that's not me i don't think that wasn't me i feel like the way that their masculinity was wasn't me all that stuff wasn't me so Mm -hmm. like you know and i I can appreciate how people are gonna look at us and Mm -hmm. feel like that's not that don't represent Mm -hmm. me either and that's Mm -hmm. fine yeah that's absolutely fine but also we didn't see ourselves when we're here Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean we created that space you have to create the space you gotta create your space because i've Mm -hmm. seen i have seen some people on like some mask on tiktok like with the ultra deep voices and the like proper like hyper masculine and i love seeing that representation Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean there might not be a lot of them there are some out there but there's definitely not a lot of them and i would say if you're frustrated that you you're not being represented create that representation mm. just the same way as Hoochie Daddy you know the creator created that to show a, you know a variety of masculine presenting people yeah. do that yeah. do you know yeah, what I mean he was there with her with her pom pom I didn't expect her to win a pom pom shot but she wore a pom pom shot listen like I'm I am you know I'm not a, I wouldn't call myself a stud I don't think I've ever called myself a stud no I'm and even like my I, I am you know I feel like I have femininity and masculinity that both like live inside me mm-hmm. and it's not just one way. Do you know what I mean? They both, li- I'm able to to be both mm-hmm. and I like that about myself. I like that duality. Do you know what I mean? I grew up around girls. I didn't, I had all girlfriends. I never had guy friends. Yeah. I don't have that kind of influence, mm-hmm. you know? So I am, um, I identify as she, um, but just not in the sort of typical she way. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's why I add day to it. But essentially yeah this is how i've been brought up these are my influences and this this is what makes me who i am and i'm very like happy and content with with that Mm -hmm. you know that identity because even like the other day i think um we met um someone and she you know i was like oh we was having a conversation i was just like oh because i'm asking presenting she was like are you and i was like am i am i not Mm -hmm. and then i asked our, our other friend i was like oh um, she doesn't think I'm masculine presenting. And she was like, oh, you're masculine presenting with a, a, a lowercase m. I was like, I'll take that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, everybody is got, everyone's different. Everyone's on the spectrum. If everyone's different. Presenting, don't tell me that, please. Give it to yourself. Like, <laughs> but people are going to think that because I've, heard, I've also heard that from somebody that I know 
Yeah, people people say it. People do say it. But the thing is, people will see you in different ways. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. And then you just can't see, think. See me like that. You 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 can't think. You but you can't think about that. Do you know what I mean? You can't you can't dwell on how other people see you because there's gonna be ten people who see you in ten different ways. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't dwell on that. Yeah. You just see how you you see yourself how you see yourself and be be going and live your life and enjoy. Yeah. I'm projecting on me, girl. <laughs> yeah. No, but the <laughs> thing is, we are shady as fuck. Mm-hmm. We are a little bit sassy, so. Mm-hmm. But we also be your best eater, so. There's also that. <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs> there's also that. What is next on my agenda? Mm-hmm. That's what I was looking at. I'm oh, looking the, at. the lady that. The woman that went to jail. Oh, my God. There's a lady who went to jail for pretending to be a man. Mm-hmm. She deceived someone to say that she was a man and had sex with the person, mm-hmm. woman. And the woman, I think the woman didn't know that yeah, she was, was a man. man. So she went on her Facebook page. No, she was a woman, sorry. And this wasn't like a situation where this, this person was trans or anything like No, that. they were. This person just deceived them. Yeah. And when they had sex, they had a strap on and they always wore an oversized t-shirt so that they hid their below bit. So, you know, mm-hmm. the, the woman couldn't see that it was in fact a strap on and not a real penis. And... I mean, this kind of reminds me of the Muay Thai Kai situation. Mm-hmm. Right? If you don't know what Muay Thai Kai is, we had an episode back in the days um, <laughs> called Muay Thai Kai. And it did cause a little bit of controversy, actually, when we had that episode out. Um, basically, somebody back in the day pretended to, in in our, in our community, pretended to be a boy. The person is a girl, but they explained to us that they had... Um, issues with their gender identity mm-hmm. at the time and they didn't really have the language know what to do they, didn't, they thought they wanted to be a boy but actually they didn't after after some research they didn't yeah. want to be a boy and after having more like knowledge and stuff you yeah. know they could they realised that you, they could be like you know masculine presenting or mm-hmm. a stud yeah. Um, and yeah so like she they came on to the to the podcast and, and spoke about they, that they did come on the podcast before people say they came, did not come on the podcast we spoke to them and then we, oh they didn't come no because that was the issue because somebody tried to say oh, that came on their podcast. yes yeah they didn't come, <laughs> didn't on, the come on the podcast no, no, no. I spoke we, you spoke to them and we yeah. spoke about it on and the podcast on the podcast yeah that's yeah. what happened my bad my bad mm-hmm. um I, the came on the podcast. yeah they didn't <laughs> um and that was like you know a very like similar situation because they dated girls and pretended to be a boy mm-hmm. and like obviously that that's deceit and so in this case of this woman who deceived a woman for a year they were in a relationship with this woman for a year and was able to deceive them um by pretending to be a boy and apparently this you know the girl um the one identified as a girl she was even trying on wedding dresses she thought it was gonna be, she was gonna be with this person mm-hmm. thinking that they were a boy um and now they've been sentenced to prison for 10 years is it, is it 10 years they got i think they got 10 years oh and that's a long time for that i mean it's not because it's it is, not a long it's, it's, time it's an assault yeah it's, it's, it's sexual assault like, i just feel like anyway 10 yeah. years 10 years more than 10 years oh. it's sexual assault because when you don't give somebody all the information it is sexual, is assault. sexual assault yeah it is, it is. you know you, then they don't have all the information to make an informed decision yeah in having sex with you yeah it was non-consensual it was non-consensual yeah, you're yeah. using a strap on that they don't know about mm-hmm. You're using something that they don't know about during sex. That is sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And they've gone to prison for 10 years. Do you know, I hope, I wish there was more information about that. Yeah. Because it didn't even really say why the person did it. But they said that it wasn't gender dysphoria. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, I did read read that because I thought maybe this person had some gender Mm. um, dysphoria, but they said there wasn't. Mm. So I just wonder what you're wrong. But there must have been something because I'm I'm not like, you know, I'm not, I'm not excusing this person's behavior, but I, I'm just trying to understand. Mm -hmm. Like there must have been something because why would you do, why Mm. would you do that? It is really weird. It like, really weird. there was, there was, a, it, when I was in school, there was a situation like that, you know, when I was in school, I was mm. like year 10 or week, son. And my best friend at the time, um, told me she lost her virginity to this boy. Mm. He was a very popular boy. And then about a year or two later, it came out that this boy was actually a girl. Mm. And we all knew this boy because it was the, it was the peng boy that used to stand outside the girl's school. Do you know what I mean? And then next hand turned that came out that it was a girl and everyone started saying, yeah, they knew him when he was a girl mm. in primary school. And I was like, okay, well, you say something. And I went to my friend and I was like, so did you have sex with him? That Did you lose her Virginia? And she was like, she was very confused. Mm. And 
we fell out because of that because well we, we became friends later on but we f- we're not friends now but at the time we fell out because of that and but none of us had language none of us had the yeah. none of us yeah. had language all the knowledge yeah I, it wasn't until i got a lot older that i even thought about it and mm. I thought, hold on that person i think they were trans probably because i do think they were actually trans. yeah i do mm-hmm. and because nobody around them knew that it was a girl that knew them from secondary school anyway and it was just it was just it was at the time it was very bizarre a bit yeah. like this, a bit like this case yeah and you know like my first thought was like oh like they really like this partner of theirs really didn't know that they were a girl like after being with them for a year like after being intimate with them and i mean this is not the first time we've heard something like this mm. so I mean, it happens. Yeah. Do you know, people are able to deceive in that way. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I really just want to understand why they why they did that. Yeah, I wish there was more information. On yeah, that. but it's very limited um, news article. It is very, but it is a sexual assault. Yeah, for sure. There's no denying that. For sure. And no matter what this per, no matter what the reasons were for this person doing that, mm-hmm. it was sexual assault. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But should we start to wrap up? Then? Yeah. Happy New Year, guys. Hope is the new year. Your next new year is filled with everything that you want it to be and more. Mm-hmm. Blessings to you. Blessings. So, better Christmas. To everyone who is having a shitty Christmas, because, you know, there are queer people with homophobic parents, let's be honest. Now you're stuck in And now, yeah, you there. can't go anywhere. It's, yeah. On Christmas Day, there's no um, transport. There's no there's no transport Christmas Day. There's no TFL. Yeah. And we just want to extend lots of love to you, those of you who are it maybe in that situation. Yeah. And um hopefully one day you won't be. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully you won't be like shout out to Tanya. Queer Black Christmas hasn't happened yet as we're recording, but by the time it comes it out, will it will happen happened, by now. Yeah. So I hope that everyone who went to that enjoyed. Um just in case you're not able to enjoy at home as well. Like that's it's something that you guys, if you don't follow it already, follow it exists loudly and um just support what they do, man. It's for the young for the youth them. So just for support the youth, what they do. Yeah. And yeah, happy new year, Merry Christmas on them Monday. <laughs> <laughs> happy christmas <laughs> thanks for listening guys make sure you use the hashtag Chichi's podcast conversation on twitter make sure you rate and review us on spotify apple all that good stuff F- um subscribe to youtube like comment on subscribe we've been seeing the comment we need to start commenting back we need to log in to start commenting yeah back. yeah we do and until next week peace next year peace, peace. <laughs>